because if you're celebrating the fact that you're on vacation. You may want to back up so you get pretty wet. We're about to be celebrating with you guys today. For those of you coming in the front row, you might want to take just a couple steps back away from the railing. That will keep you a little bit drier during our show. And it'll give you a better view of those overhead monitors. If you guys wish to change your hotel for our show, that's completely fine. You just ask that you please do not crawl through under or above our handheld. Please go in under the ends of the aisles. We may do so safely. We're also going to ask that you please do not sit or stand on any of those handrails or place small children on them as well. Thank you. Alright, let's take all this fun here. So, hello everybody. Hello. My name is Kristen and I'll be your director on set. Right down at the end of the night is my assistant, David. There he is. Yeah, yeah. We would like to welcome you guys to Disney's Hollywood Studios Backlot Tour. Your tour begins right here on a special effects and water tank. Now, water tanks just like this one continue to play a major role in action films. It's here that the explosive, out of control may have you seen movies like Crimson Tide, The Rock, and of course Pearl Harbor all can be created using many large scale physical and mechanical effects. That action is then known as a carefully planned sequence of events. And today you are in luck because we're actually going to create our very own action sequence called Harbor Attack. We're going to be using some of the same special effects used by directors like Michael Bay in the film. In fact, there's Michael now to set the scene for us. In this scene, Provo is on a surveillance mission, searching the skies for enemy aircraft, who is caught off guard with the real danger of services from the MPC. It is going to require a full range of physical effects, a split second time, and a careful direction. We have the lights, we have the cameras, all we need now is the action. And if anyone knows serious action, it's certainly director of Michael Bay. So some of the visual effects will be added to the action in our scenes that are include a water cannon. Oh, we also have some bullets, which must be programmed in time to match the of the individuals. And I'm sure the pattern of those sound effects. And the last and probably the most important physical effect is like this. It's fire, which must be ignited at a precise moment. And that's because it takes a lot of work and time to reset those charges for an explosion. Now, of course, the number one consideration in the timing of all of these effects is only the safety of our actors on set, and that's where you come in. Everyone, let's hear it for Dan! of the roll from the cannon. May your scene takes place all the way down at the bottom of that new D boat. But you know, we're going to make this one bit of it because we recreated for you right here about water. We follow David, they'll get you in position. Now we're going to be shooting two scenes tonight, but not in the order that they appear in the script. Today, most movies are shot out of sequence, which means that actors have to react to a situation that hasn't even been filmed yet. Meant to be a real challenge. But that's why it's the director's job to help them find that motivation for the scene. All right, Dan, here's your setup. Now that oh, phone's going to buzz really just cool. before. 800 gallons of water up out of that water tank fly down that chute and loves to let him into you like a freight train. Are you feeling motivated to hang on? Yep, yep, bundling up. All right, that's great. Because it's actually about a thousand gallons of water, but there's a fine line between motivation and fear. We'll play that. Remember, you just lost your engine, okay? And action! Pick up that phone. Pick up your phone talk for a second. Let him you know you lost your engine. Then you might be taking a little bit of water. And cut. That's why we call it a physical effect. Everyone, let's hear it for Dan. <laughs> now I'm just going to give you one more job, okay? That is to sit in this chair, look dramatically into the audience, and I want you to act dry. <laughs> can't, you can't do it. You can't act dry. Act, act dry. Okay, we'll try. We'll try. We're going to do that on our next scene. You'll see how it all ties together for the final sequence. Our next setup takes place right on the deck of our PT boat. So let's head over to David and meet the rest of our brave crew. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Captain Dean. Woo! And 
Sorcerer's Apprentice. Look at all this old junk that was. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah, that's an army junk. Cool Harbor. Maybe Street Town. Some Mary Poppins booth. Old string here. Clown taxi. Oh, yeah, shrink kids' laser gun, a motorcycle. Cool. US mail. That looks like some King Louis the 14th. King Louis the 14th. Hey, that guy. He's so annoying to learn about. Awesome Hall. More paintings, toys. Trust me, if it's in a movie, it's worth buying out. Just get a taxi. Water. See that school bowl, man? That's from uh, Pirates of Caribbean 2.
More people. Welcome to the Studio Backlot Tour. For a safe trip, please remain seated with your hands, okay, arms, you feet, and legs Thank inside the tram. And be Thank sure to you watch your children. Thank you. Bienvenidos. Para que tengan un viaje seguro, permanezcan sentados. Con las manos, brazos, pies, y piernas dentro del tren. Y vigilen a los niños. Gracias. Disney's Hollywood Studios. This production area was built in 1988 as a Florida counterpart to the Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California. We included sound stages, recording studios, high-tech editing rooms, all the tools needed to create movies, TV shows, and radio broadcasts. We've even got our very own water tower, too. It's up ahead on the left side of our shuttle. We call it the Earful Tower. It's inspired by the water tower Walt Disney had built for his Burbank studio in 1939. Our Florida tower stands a lucky 13 stories high, and we added our own creative touch, a giant set of Mickey Mouse ears. If you wanted to wear those ears, you'd have to have a hat size of 342 and 3 eighths. Up ahead, after the next bend in the road, you'll have a perfect opportunity to take a picture of this famous icon. In the world of entertainment, every project starts with a screenplay and a lot of creative ideas. A production studio is where the ideas of writers, producers, and directors are transformed into an on-screen reality. Within these huge spaces, filmmakers can literally create their own worlds. Our Florida sound stages are soundproof, weatherproof, and most importantly, air-conditioned. All vitally important for the cast, crew, and equipment. Many of the crafts needed for filmmaking are located right here on the lot. On the left, we have our own greens department. It grows flowers, trees, shrubs, and topiaries. A few well-placed plants can cover up empty spots in the set and add a touch of natural beauty to a scene. On the right are two of the aircraft from the 2001 blockbuster hit Pearl Harbor. These exact full-scale replicas of P-40 fighters were used in the special effect fight sequences. Of course, many of the planes you saw flying through the aerial battles or sitting on the ground weren't real at all. They were created entirely within a computer. Oh, keep your cameras focused to the right. We're coming up at that perfect angle of the Earful Tower I told you about. It's a true masterpiece. We're in 
featuring one of our most glamorous and colorful departments, creative costuming. Every star has to have just the right wardrobe, and it all begins here with a designer sketch. Our team of designers, seamstresses, and tailors can turn one and a half million yards of fabric into over 25,000 costumes every year. Many of these costumes will become part of the shows and attractions of the Walt Disney World Resort. In fact, here in Florida, we have the largest working wardrobe department in the world. While Mickey Mouse alone has over 175 different outfits to choose from, while Minnie Mouse keeps more than 200 unique costumes in her wardrobe. On the left are costumes worn by the stars in recent studio production. You'll probably recognize some of those costumes from the big screen. Every story needs a setting, and our design staff can create just about any place a strip call for, from an urban city street to a remote desert canyon. On the left is our scenic shop where large scale sets and props are built. Our team of set designers, carpenters, artists, and engineers has created caves and caverns, game show sets, even replicas of the U.S. Supreme Court and NASA's Mission Control, all on our sound stages. The shop also provides sets and props for our shows and parades here at Walt Disney World. The same skill and craftsmanship that goes into a movie set can also be used to create magic for our parks. Either way, it's all about making dreams come true. Now we're entering a zone we call the Bone Yard. It's an outdoor storage area for oversized props and vehicles. Cars, trucks, boats, planes, we often save these props in case we need them for future production. In this backlot collection, you may find real working vehicles, non-working mock-ups, and even large-scale miniatures used in special effects shots. Large-scale models create a more convincing illusion on camera. We even place small cutout passengers in the windows of the plane. by the sets for our lights, motors, action, extreme stunt show. On the left, you may catch a glimpse of the Mediterranean fishing village that sets the stage for this thrilling attraction. We'll get a closer look at it soon, but for now, we're approaching one of the largest standing sets on our back lot. It's over on the right. It may not look like much from this angle, but it's pretty spectacular on the other side. The production Danger. crew has just given us clearance to enter the set. Hello, Backlog Tour. I'm Amy, a production coordinator here at the studios. I can see your shuttle heading toward our canyon set. I've given your driver permission to come in and take a look around. I'm up here with our effects crew, but we're getting ready to shoot a test sequence. Oh, on the way in, you're going to be crossing a wooden bridge, and things may get a little bumpy, so please, hold on to your belongings, especially hats, cameras, and glasses, and keep an eye on any small children in your
100% real water, about 70,000 gallons of it, dumped from overhead tanks. Oh, but don't worry, we recycle. All of that water will be pumped right back up to the top for the next tank. We shoot some of the water through air cannons for an extra dynamic effect. Those air cannons are powerful enough to shoot a basketball over the top of a skyscraper that's under the entire state building. To top it off, our shuttle was sitting on hydraulic shaker cables. They provide the shaking, rattling, and rolling sensations for the scene. The entire sequence can be reset in three and a half minutes. That's just enough time to bring in the next shuttle. Well, I've got to get ready for our next take. Thank you all for being part of the action. Hey, I'm needed back on the set, so enjoy the rest of your tour. Okay, well, thanks, Amy, for giving us access to the set. On the right, we have an authentic piece of Disney history. That Gulfstream 1 was known at airports across the country as November 234 Mickey Mouse, but we just call it the Mouse. In 1964, Walt Disney and his hand-picked team used this plane to scout locations for what he called the Florida Project. Soon, they secretly began purchasing thousands of acres of land, which became the Walt Disney World Resort in 1971. During the creation of the resort and later Epcot, the mouse shuttled studio executives and Imagineers between Burbank and Orlando, making it the most used executive aircraft in the country. Appropriately, the mouse retired here in 1992. As Walt used to say, it was all started by a mouse. In this case, the 234 Mickey Mouse. On our right, we once again sweep past the magnificent Mediterranean village of our lights, motors, action extreme stunt show. This high octane attraction is based on the hit show from the Walt Disney Studios Park in France. In this action packed production, you'll feel like you're right there on the set during the filming of a spy thriller, complete with custom built cars, motorcycles, even jet skis. You'll experience the split second timing, coordinated driving, and fiery special effects that make action movies a real blast. The staging area to our right is known as Acceleration Alley. Here, the custom-built stunt show vehicles rev their engines up to 70 miles an hour before making their high-speed entrances onto the stage for our lights, motors, action extreme stunt show. Of course, these are professional stunt drivers. We hope you'll enjoy their daring driving skills, but please, don't try them yourself. We've reached our second boneyard with more historic props and vehicles. When we reuse older props in a new production, they're often refitted with custom parts and given a whole new color scheme. You might not even recognize them the next time you see them on screen. For instance, coming up is our friend Herbie the Love Bug. He went through a special demolition derby makeover. Those dents and dings were added on purpose, but he can be polished up as good as new for his next starring role. On our right, we now have a very different view of the fishing village set. From this point of view, you can see that there is no inside of the buildings. They are just false fronts or facades. In the movie business, set builders only create what the camera has to see. It's an old movie trick dating all the way back to the silent era. To add to the sense of realism and avoid the cost of set building, many of today's television shows and movies film on location in cities and towns across the U.S. But out in the real world, you've got to contend with noise, traffic, crowds, and various visual elements that may or may not belong in your film. Here on the back lot, we can avoid these problems because we created our very own flexible urban environment. Our Streets of America facades can stand in for a small town or a giant metropolis. As we come around the last corner on our route, you'll see the skyline of New York City in the distance. It's really a series of painted flats, expertly designed to fool the eye and the camera. We can dress and decorate these streets to look like any city we want, from Chicago to San Francisco. Depending on the choice of vehicles, props, and costumes, we can even turn back the clock and set our story in a different time. And what's more, these sets are built with Florida weather in mind. They're made to withstand 100 mile an hour winds. You're welcome to visit our streets of America. Please remain seated at all times. I need everyone, including children, remain seated. We're clear. We 
we've just about reached the end of our tour. Our final stop is the American Film Institute Showcase, where you can see the actual costumes and movie props used in some of Hollywood's most famous films. There are some pretty amazing items in there, so feel free to take all the time you like. Please stay seated until our tram comes to a complete stop and check around you for any personal items that may have fallen during our trip. Well, as they say in Hollywood, that's a wrap. Thanks for joining our Backlot Tour, and we hope you'll come back to visit us again soon. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Please remain seated while we come to our full and complete stop. Here come those doors. Please watch your head and your step as you exit. You will be going towards those blue flying off doors by the front of the shuttle. That will be your one and only way back into the park today. Have a wonderful rest of your day here. Bye-bye.